we should, in every instance, you know, champion just much of what, like what you just said, you know, champion our significant others, you know, because if my wife gets a promotion, that's a win for me too, because like, I'm genuinely happy for her. I need to do what I can to uplift her and be her biggest advocate and vice versa. If I get a promotion then it should be the same. So I think a lot of times in relationships, sometimes when we see what's on the outside, we get into that comparison type stuff. And I think that's, uh, that can do more harm than good because you know, what goes on on your team, the Cleveland Browns didn't happen on my team, New York Giants, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, and, and same for what goes on in your house, what works for you in your house, doesn't necessarily work for me in my house. You know, I can take bits and pieces of your game plan. I can take bits and pieces of what you put out as far as your content, things because you drop gems all the time on social media, um, damn near every day. And you, you're very, the thing I love about what you do is you're very transparent about, you know, where you are and where your wife, where you guys are in your relationship and your friendship. And I think that's the key. And not only that, but you're very transparent about where you were. Like you mentioned your ex-wife, you mentioned on this podcast several times about how you, you know, were at, you know, a certain level, if you will, social media wise, whatever the case may be. And then all that had to be torn down. And this is, you know, not a, I, I'm not even going to say, you, I think you used the word rebrand, but I wouldn't even call it a rebrand. It's more of a rebuild. And, um, you know, you're not scared to put that information out there. So you drop gems. And, you know, one of the things that I always take from you is that, you know, you your success is is shared and i think you know that's one of the things that i didn't really hammer in on on that particular episode but i wanted to talk about was uh you know the success you know the success and the failures because there will be failures in a in a relationship and a friendship and a marriage and you know you got to carry that other person yeah man that is good because and, and we talked about the whole jealousy piece um and the funny thing about that is with with football whoever scores like you say, that's that's a team. That's seven points. That's six points for the, the team, not just you right. just because you didn't score. But I know sometimes there can be jealousy because someone else is maybe uh, blowing up career-wise. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone is still trying to find himself, you know, so that kind of can play into your relationship. I remember one time uh, when Brett Favre went to the Minnesota Vikings. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about Brett Favre, right? And, and let's just talk about him from a football perspective, not not what goes on off the field. Right. That's a that's a different show. We're not gonna jump into. Yeah, that's that. that's a whole different show right there. I know what people are gonna say in the comments, so let's not go in the comments about Brett Favre. We 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 going somewhere with this. Mm -hmm. uh, when he went to Minnesota, and I'm like arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but the coach mm -hmm. there at the time. He wasn't going to let Brett Favre play that week because Brett didn't know the playbook. And I was just like, wow, that's that's amazing to me. That spoke volumes to me because I'm like, not knowing your playbook and being on a new team can cause some kind of friction. So one of the things that brought my wife and I together was our spirituality. And, and mm -hmm. I maybe tweeted about this before, but when we were dating, and this was always a measure for me. I was like, hey, you want to have Bible study? <laughs> now, this isn't to say that I had to preach a sermon or anything. It was more of mm -hmm. us reading a piece of the Bible and coming back the next day or whatever and say, hey, wh what do you think God is saying to you about this? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and she stuck with me with that. Like she and like you said, the pillar. Right. And that was one of the things that drew us together was her spirituality. And I was like, okay, she's a big fan of the playbook. So we can always mm -hmm. be on the same page with that. So. Yeah, it matters. It matters. And, you know, not only knowing your playbook, but, you know, knowing your personnel, you know, you got to know your wife and she knew you well enough and you knew where you knew her well enough to ask her, Hey, can you read this piece? And what do you think? And then you weren't judgmental and said, well, no, nah, this, you know, you didn't probably didn't enforce your, uh, you know, what you thought about that particular scripture that you read. Because the, the, the thing about the Bible is, is that it's up to everyone's interpretation. You and I can read the same scripture and we can get 10 different things out of it and none of the 10 match, you know. So and that's not to say that what I read or what I interpret is different from you and it's wrong. 
you know, it's just what you see and what you read and what you feel. So, yeah, yeah I yeah. get you on that. Yeah, for sure. I was uh, listening to the podcast when you talked about uh, football and relationships. From that podcast, which which part was your favorite? Which parallel of yours was probably the best one that you think you can give the advice to people listening or watching today? Um, I think the biggest thing that I took away from that podcast is just really, um, one, for me, it's, it's very personal because and I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Football is my first love. Like before I loved any girl at the age of seven, I love, I fell in love with football and it's, it, it's still my first love. Now I love my wife, you know, that's, <laughs> that's my best friend. So I'm not, don't get it twisted. I'm not choosing her over football, but if I could play football, no, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't let her listen to this episode. But I get you. Damage right, control. right, right. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. Way to bring me back in. Way to bring me back in. <laughs> um, but the thing that I took from it was like, you know, how much it, it mirrors the, the game of life mirrors, you know, football. And, you know, you got quarters. And in each quarter, you know, just like the game of football, you got four quarters. And we all have quarters of our life. And each play could be each day or each year. And you're going to have what they call negative plays, meaning like you're going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. Meaning when you equate that to life, you're going to have ups and downs at work. You may lose your job. You know, you're going to have bumps in the road when it, you're going to have bumps in the road in your relationship. You're going to have bumps in the road with friendships, family members. You know, how do you adjust when you get to halftime or when you can get back, excuse me, when you get back to the sideline, how do you adjust? Do you, do you, can you, do you huddle up and say, Hey, Hey, let's, let's get this together. You know, I'm sure you and your wife do this. My wife and I do this. You know, it, it's, it's, um, I heard somebody say this once, uh, you know, go through film session, you know, you know, like players after the week, they, you know, said they put you in front of the film and they're like, okay, Hey, this is what you did wrong. This is where you messed up right here. You know? And, you know, I'm sure your wife is kind of like mine, you know, they will tell you and show you, this is where you messed up. They were saying the so, game film. like when you're in that film session, oh yeah, you got to watch the game film. And when you watch the game film, can you course correct? Or are you going to be in your feelings about being criticized? Mm. Not called out. There's a difference between being criticized and being called out, you know, and there's a lot of film sessions in my house. Um, <laughs> and your wife we've had a lot of film sessions over the years. Now, oh, yeah. Hey, oh, but trust me, I got a click too now. I, I, I keep a click on that. I keep one on deck. You know what I'm saying? So, no, don't get it twisted. We both have a film session. But I think part of that goes to just, you know, like I said, in a game, you have to adjust. The games that we watch each Sunday, they're really adjusting on the fly. You know, every time there's an offensive possession, the offense goes out there and let's say they get a three and out. Okay, now they got to come to the sideline. So when the defense goes out, the offense on the side, they're, what we don't see on camera is that they're regrouping. They come back in and talking, okay, hey, what did you see? Well, I saw this. This right here might work. And honestly, in a relationship, in a friendship, in a marriage, that's constant. That's that's what we should be doing. Um, sometimes we can get a little busy and we get away from that. And when we get away from that, you know what happens, Sean? We tend to kind of start freelancing. We're not running the plays that was called. We're out there doing our own thing. And then you have to kind of be slapped by reality and say, and you know, sometimes God will show you like, nah, you ain't doing this by yourself now. This, this is to be a team thing so let's so you work within the confinements of the team so that's one of the things that i learned like just how to move throughout the quarters and what i've learned over life over a period of lifetime is that you know you even with, with your su successes you know you celebrate them you don't get too caught up in them and with your failures failures you don't get too caught up in them either because you're going to have successful plays you're going to have negative plays but if you play the game and you play the game long enough in life, not just outside of a marriage or friendship or relationship, if you play it long enough and you keep playing and, you be, and you're persistent, you're going to have more success than failures. Can you handle it? And can you build on each success? And um, and by success, I don't mean that you got to be the you know CEO of a Fortune 500 company, but you know be the better you each day. And um, you know that's one of the things I took from the podcast, just figuring out how to navigate throughout the quarters. And then, you know, course correct along the way and be able to 
give and take constructive criticism. Mm, yeah, that's powerful. I like that part of the show when you talked about that because <laughs> I'm like, oh, we got to talk about that. Oh, we got to talk about that, right? <laughs> and I like it because even you can look at the the Jacksonville and San Diego game. Facts. I thought it was over. I was like, I did this too. Boy, I'm saying this boy Trevor Lawrence threw what four picks in that game? Four picks. Four picks in a in a half. In a half, right? And I'm thinking. <laughs> your relationship, your marriage, your life, your friendship, you can really turn that thing around in the halftime. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Uh, because Lord knows how many interceptions I threw on my last marriage. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was Trevor Lawrence. So, mm -hmm. um, but now that I'm remarried, I was able to turn that thing around and, and, and win right. eventually. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I like and, that. You and and you just, that. you learn to take it play by play. I mean, like, I'm sure the Jacksonville coach, when they went in the half, because it's not, there's really not much you can say to a team when you're down 27 nothing at halftime. The thing that you can tell them is like, look, we ain't going to get it all back in one play. So let's just focus on each play, each day, one by one, bit by bit. And it's it sounds simple, but I mean, that's really how should we, we should attack life. We should be looking forward, of course. But, you know, you ain't going to get it all back in one day. You ain't going to get it. I mean, we all would love to hit the lottery. <laughs> but the reality is we ain't going to do it. So we, most of us are going to have to get up and go to somebody's job or our own job or, you know, work for ourselves to earn a living and then go from there. So, um, yeah, it, it's you, – you're right. You, you're going to throw some interceptions. You're going to have some turnovers. You're going to have some fumbles. You're going to have some penalties. Pen a penalty could be as simple as hurting, hurting someone's feelings. But how do you bounce back from that? And then, you know, the thing is, you don't want to keep making the same penalties. You know, I one of the things my coach used to tell us in college all the time. He's like, he said, I can deal with a penalty. He said, but I can't deal with a lazy penalty. You know what a lazy penalty is, Sean? Jumping offside. How are you going to jump offside? You you know the play, you know when the count is. What you jumping offside for? You know, uh, he said he could he could understand a hustle penalty. A hustle penalty would be something like. You know, I don't know, hitting somebody is they're going out of bounds. You shouldn't do it, but it happens. But I correlate that between in life and saying that, you know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes in finance. You're going to make mistakes in a marriage. You're going to make mistakes in your friendships and your relationships with your family, maybe with your kids. How do you bounce back from it? It, it? Nothing is a fail shot. As long as we're alive, we still got a chance to turn things around. So uh, that's, that's my mindset. Mm, yeah, I like that because... Some relationships, they just got too many penalties. <laughs> they just got too many. <laughs> they just, you know, right. you, yeah, you look at the stat sheet and you just like, this mm -hmm. is the most penalized relationship in the league. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to start, you know, at square one. You know, mm -hmm. y'all need to, maybe I need to start over. Maybe you need to trade. Maybe you need to go and play for another team. Yeah. You know, and that's if anybody <laughs> want to pick you up because they know how many penalties you've occurred over exactly. your. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And, you know, it's it, sometimes you got to regroup like that and say, well, you know what? This ain't working. You know, it is maybe we need a new playbook. Maybe we just need to be on different teams, you know, and that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've seen players flourish when they play for other teams. You know, mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what's that? Your boy, and sometimes uh, it's about being on it. No, no, I, I was going to say sometimes it's just about with another team. You're more appreciated, more appreciated, you know. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.